Dave, David Scott was talking about how um, you know, not that long ago, he said he didn't want to be called Mr. Snyder anymore. Remember, he said. Well, yeah, I mean, we all, we were all, everybody <laughs> was at Mr. Snyder, Mr. Always, S. Always Mr. S, Mr. Yeah. Snyder. And how it just sort of got started, and he said, no, no, call me Ed, call me Ed. But it just became such a term of endearment also, yeah. almost, right, to call him Ed Snyder that, that nobody could stop. Well, I mean, you know, the thing is that we've had, we've had uh, Paul Holmgren on and David Scott on, and they both said, you know, we knew this day was coming. There, yeah, we did, and we, we've all kind of known it for a while as well, but it doesn't make it any easier, and it, and it really sort of drives home what, what, a, what a just spearhead he was for so many different yeah. things. I mean, I, I keep using the word visionary, but you, you look at what he was able to do. Not a lot of people thought this thing was going to work here. Not only did it work, I'm talking about the Flyers right. in, the, in the mid to late 60s, it flourished. It took off almost immediately, and... You know, he took over uh, uh, the spectrum, and the roof blew off uh, in, in the '68 season, and they didn't have a they didn't have a home for a little while. Spectrum goes into bankruptcy. In January '72, he takes over the arena. They had an eight million dollar debt, and he pays that off. Right. This guy was brilliant from a business perspective too. And not just his home. Yeah. To get that expansion to Philadelphia. Exactly. And, and this and guy had stones. And okay? not, Let's be real about this. And not just brilliant from a business perspective, guys. I think it gets so lost so easily that he wasn't a hockey guy. There are jokes that some of the guys who were around the team back in the 70s say that he saw a lineup card once for a hockey game in Boston, didn't know what it was, right? This wasn't a guy who had background in the sport, but he, he adopted it. He made it his own. And now you can't be in Philadelphia and think about hockey and not immediately think of Ed Snyder and all that he brought to the sport. And the you, know, you know, more than any of us sitting here, Sarah, the type of guy that he is. You've had multiple conversations yeah. with him and experiences with him over the years, especially with his foundation and the fact that you know, back in the 60s when the expansion team was brought here to Philly and he was, you know, the main part of that and the fact that a lot of people said that that was the most likely to fail, yep. that probably oh, gave yes, him yeah. a little bit more oomph to say, you know what, no, absolutely, we're yeah. going to do this. It doesn't surprise me at all, you know, Ed, Ed Snyder, to those who didn't know him well, was considered sort of a tough guy, right? He definitely had this tough outer shell. Intimidating. He was intimidating. People might, might not have realized what, what laid beneath. It was only those who actually got to know him. It, uh, those who worked with him, those who played for his organization, that really understood that this guy was like a father figure. And there are so many hockey players, and I know I've talked to a bunch of these guys over the years, who, who don't think they would have ever had careers, certainly Bobby Clark, had there not been Ed Snyder, who, who took a chance on this organization and in a lot of ways took a chance on a number of big well, players. I'll tell you what was really interesting, too, the evolution, right? Um, and it wasn't all that long ago. It usually, you know, the, the old saying is you can't teach old, dog new, old dogs new tricks, yeah. right? Not Ed Snyder. I mean, he got, it got to the point where he understood, you know what, I need to let Ron Hextall take this thing over, take it in his direction. We're going to go slow about this. It's about cultivating the team, drafting, not trying to necessarily go out there and get the high-priced free agent. I, I thought that told you a lot about him at that stage of his life and that stage of his ownership that he was willing to do that. You're absolutely right. It's very easy, you know, especially for somebody who's been around a sport or a team for decades, to just keep doing the same old, same old, hey, it worked once, why, why can't it work again? instead of really taking a chance and going in a different direction from what this team had been doing for decades. And he did that yep. recently. And with this playoff berth that the Flyers clinched, that Ed Snyder was able to witness, we're seeing it paying dividends already. Yeah, and I think we're seeing the beginning of what, uh, of what this is ultimately going to blossom into in a couple of years. And the fact that Ron Hextall has been around this organization for so many years, they have a relationship going back so long, and that you know he, he's left this in his hands. And, and to be able to have this playoff berth here, is just incredible at the hands of Ron Hextall. You brought in Dave Hextall, you yeah. know, Ed Snyder has seen the changes and, and seen the things that Ron Hextall has done for this team and the positive outlook that we're having right now. For him to be able to see what it was like here in the Wells Fargo Center Saturday, just as the Flyers clinched the playoffs, of course, uh, Lauren Hart, as she sang God Bless America, with Kate Smith up on the big screen, she was FaceTiming at Center, so he was able to see the atmosphere. She brought the center to him there in California. For, for him to have known that that was like that on Saturday, really it's cool. so huge, such a cool, beautiful moment. You know what else, too? I, I mean, the, the success that this team has had for really, for the most part, since he's owned them. Yeah, I know everybody's frustrated they haven't won once in 75, and that's legit. But I'm talking about a team that, for the most part, is a competitive playoff hockey team every single year, virtually, under Ed Snyder's stewardship. I mean, that, that, that can't be lost. We, we've been through some really dark valleys, right, with some other teams. <laughs> but for the most part, it felt like with the Flyers, whether it was that crazy run in 2010 or 97 or some of the years in between when they got pretty deep into the postseason, they were they were almost always there. And all this year, Ed Snyder saw it happen before his. And, and look, you guys know it. 
After the game on Saturday, the players were speaking about just how important it was for them to play for Snyder, and you have to believe it's going to be a hundred times more important as that first puck drops Thursday when the playoffs start. And you yeah, have to, to play for him. Yeah. I was going to say, you have to also. I took it seriously. You know, I played with a poor in order like that when I was with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Right. You know, the Rooters were the same way. You know, I went back home to see. I went back to um, uh, to, to to a Steeler game, and this is four years later. And he still knew my wife's name. He still knew I had four, I mean, five kids. He, he gave, you know, he's had to buy build a bear for four of my kids. He still knew him. Well, I think, Mr. Snyder, I see it the same way. I see everybody that knew him, everybody's around the building. You can tell the love that, you know, that they, they understood, yes, he was the guy that didn't play around, but yet, still, he was a family guy and that's really associated with everybody like that. Hey, guys, we have an Instagram post in from Michael Delzato, the Flyers uh, defenseman. He posted, rest in peace, Mr. Snyder the best owner in all of sports. Truly an amazing person. Thank you for everything you have done for Philadelphia Flyers, myself, and the city of Philadelphia. And, and certainly, you know, Michael Dezano out with, out with injury now, but this is a long time flyer. I had a couple mm -hmm. of stints here. Uh, his tweet is, RIP, Mr. Snyder, you were a great influence on my career and the best owner that I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Sad day in Flyer Nation, and, he's, and the emoji is the uh, yeah. praying hands. And, so, and I mean, that, that kind of sums up, I think, the way a lot of Flyer hands. We send our thoughts of compassion, comfort, and strength to his family, his friends, and all whose lives he touched. Again, that's Commissioner Gary Bettman. And who will be joining us live in the next hour, by the way, Gary yeah. Bettman will be, so we will get more on his take. This is the uh, statement he just released. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and that's why, you know, we, we always naturally look at things from a Philadelphia purview in terms of the, the rules committee, <laughs> business, TV, uh, how he grew the NHL, yeah. what an influence that he had on every story. But when I look back at the Flyers and their heyday, the Broad Street Bullies, the success that they had through the 70s, the Stanley Cups, yeah. I think about number 16. I think about Bobby Clark. Also, by the way, he spent time here as a general manager, still works for the team. He has been as much a part of this team for almost as long as the team as Ed Snyder has. And if it weren't for Ed Snyder, nobody would have drafted Bobby Clark. Nobody wanted to draft him. He had diabetes. He was considered too much of a risk. Yeah, back then, it was it, it, far different than the way it is now. Nobody and, wanted to yeah. get the perception. If there hadn't been Ed Snyder, Bobby Clark wouldn't have been drafted. Had Bobby Clark not been drafted, there wouldn't have been that team led by that man. Absolutely. All right. So, so many of those stories. in, uh, Flyers chairman. The Spectrum probably was one of the greatest achievements of my life. I was young enough not to know better <laughs> and to take a risk that probably I would not have taken if I were older. I just thought it would be great for the city and, you know, never looked at all the ramifications and all the downside. I just looked at what I thought would be the upside. We were under tremendous financial pressures with the Flyers particularly, and when the roof theoretically blew off, when the tarpaulin came off, and we had to play our last eight games on the road, and we had to refund uh, those eight home games to our fans, and we didn't really have the money. I mean, all of those things. It was a very difficult time, uh, but we got through it. During our first season, we had a weekend where we played two of the original six teams. We played them, we played them well, we, uh, we had a great weekend, we had sellouts, and uh, I said, we're gonna make it, we're gonna make it. What people in our business have to understand is that fans, as a group, are extremely intelligent, and you have a reason for a building. 